Hello, Jason Minet from Motion Caddy, back again for part two. If you missed the first one, I will link it in the description. But what we did was create this adjustable pie chart using sliders to change the size of each section. And in this part, we're going to be creating these numbers that display the percentage on each section and follow them around as they animate. I am starting from the same position, although I am using my initial build. Hopefully you have your pie chart from part one and let's get started. So let's do a piece of text and let's just go any number. Let's just go 10 or let's even just call this A. Let's move it roughly into position here. And then we need a new null. So lay a new null. This should automatically jump to the center, which is which is exactly where we want it. Because we want this to be rotating from the center. So we do need to select our A, or whatever you've called it, and pick whip up to this null, which I will call null 01, just so we know. And with our null 01, as you see, it will rotate around. We will fix the um, incorrect rotation later on here but for now let's just make sure it's always centered in the section we're looking for so let's put that back down to zero and on this rotation i'm just going to open up the expression box holding alt or option and clicking the stopwatch and on layer one our first section i'm just going to open up our radial wipe so we can see our transition completion and start angle let's just delete this Let's go T for transition completion and pick whip that from our first section. Semicolon, new line. Let's go A for angle. And let's pick whip our start angle. Semicolon. Let's open this up slightly. Let's go new line, new line. Let's go T times minus 3.6. And this is just our 360 degree circle divided by 100 to create the 3.6 and the minus because we're going counterclockwise if your sections were going clockwise you may need to get rid of this minus and just have it times 3.6 so let's just click off see what's happening here there's our a and let's just go to our controls and see what's happening and it seems to be attaching to our second section although i think that might just be, be because we need to change whoop, we need to change its position so if we put this up here so i'll just move the a onto the very edge of this first section because that is where it is currently following as you will see if i change that first section it's following this line got a bit confused there because it was positioned in an odd place and i couldn't work out where it was following but it is working correctly just make sure yours is positioned in the right place. At this moment in time, it is this joining line between section one and section two. So what we need to do is adjust our expression. And let's at the start of this t times minus 3.6, let's just go r equals, and at the end, add a semicolon. New line, let's go r2 equals r1, plus 360, semicolon, new line, R2, because we want the output to be R2. And click off that, and that is not working. That's because R1 doesn't exist. I need to just name that R, or keep that as R1, and make sure our first R is R1. Click off that. You'll see nothing has changed. Let's just adjust our section one. No, it's just following it around. That's because all this is doing is just fixing the rotation. If I was to delete this plus 360, you'll see that it's minus 313 because it's working from here and it's working way back to here. So it's working zero all the way around minus 300 to here. Whereas we want to go from here to here, which is a lot smaller number than that and is the correct way of doing it. So if we just add 360, to our R1, 
then it's the correct angle, which is 46.8, which is just about 45 degrees, so I can see that is correct. So that's just corrected that, and then we're going to, let's just put this R1 plus 360 in brackets, space afterwards, and let's just divide this by two, because we want it to be in the middle, so this is zero and this is one, we want it to be bang in the middle, so 0.5, so we're just gonna divide by two, and click off, and you'll see it jump straight into the center of our section. And if we go back to our controls, section one, that should now stay centered in our section one, which it is doing nicely. And there's one last thing we need to do, and that is because it's working fine on this first one because the start angle doesn't change. But on the second one, depending on the first section, the start angle changes. So we do need to at the end of this. So after divide by two, let's go space plus, and then let's add our A, which is the start angle of our layer. And we're not going to change one to index plus one this time, just because it's gonna go null A, null B, null B, no C, no D, and so on. It's not as simple as changing it, so we are going to have to duplicate these and then come back in and change these to 2, 3, 4, and 5. But let's just see if this works for now. So I'm going to select our no 1 and A, both together, duplicate, and let's just drag these up above themselves. And then here, let's just call this B now. Let's just move that down to the center of our second section. Let's go to our controls. Look, let's go to our null two, and on the keyboard press U twice just to bring up our expressions. And then in this expression, let's change these ones to twos. Then click off, and let's put it back to the center. Let's go to our controls to see if that's working. We're going to adjust our section two and that is staying in the middle of section two. But I just want to check that when I change section one, it also changes uh, the position of B. So I'm just going to increase that section. And that is working exactly as we wanted to. So now what I can do is duplicate. Actually, before I duplicate, what I'm going to do is uh, change the number of this A and B. And let's go down to our text on A. And our source text and on controls let's just open up so we can see our slider one and then on a source text let's open up our expression box and pick whip to that slider one and click off now that is equal to whatever our slider one is equal to so if i was to adjust this slider one that number will also increase with it i'm then going to copy this source text Go to B and open up source text, click on that and paste. I'm going to then open that expression and change the one to a two. So it's looking at slider number two. And there we go. So now, let's go that B. So now let's um, highlight our null two and B, duplicate those. And then go to a null three, hit U twice change these to a three. And then on B, again, press U twice, so we can see our source text expression, and also change that to a three. And there we go, you will see that there, let's just move that into position a bit neater. Let's have to do this two more times, so let's just do this quickly. Open up our expression, change these to a four. And our source text also to four. Duplicate that one more time. Change these to a five. And our source text to five. Now we have our five numbers all in the correct place and also adjust depending on whatever our input is in our sliders. 
So you will notice that the um, rotation on our numbers is incorrect. By the time it gets to the bottom, they are completely upside down. You want them to be always facing the correct way up. Unless you don't, it's completely up to you. But to fix this, we just need to go and select our null 1 and A to start with. Press R, just so our rotation shows up here. And on the A, open the expression box. Let's go R equals, and then pick whip to the rotation of its null. Semicolon on the end, space, minus R. And click off. And all that's doing is it's looking at the rotation of our null and countering it, essentially. So whatever the rotation is in the null, it's minus. So when this rotates 10 degrees, it will go 10 degrees in the opposite direction keeping it nice and flat. So let's do that on all the other ones. R, expression box on B, R equals pick quick to our rotation, semicolon minus R. And there we go. What we can do is just copy this rotation, click on the word rotation itself, copy. Let's go to this one, which should be called C, that should be called D, and that should be called E. So go to C. Press R, expression box. Oh, we don't even need to do the expression box. Click on the word rotation and paste. And then in the expression, just change our null two to our null three, because that's the name of the null for this one. Let's go to D, paste that in again, open the expression. And this has null 04. And then E, rotation, paste, change that to null five. Now they're all the correct way up. They have changed position slightly, so I will just readjust to wherever I want them. And that will do for now. So I'm just gonna close all our expressions. I'm gonna drag our controls to the top. Let's just make sure these are working. So the rotation is working from the bottom corner, so I want it to be centered. So I'm just gonna select all our our numbers and in paragraph I'm just going to center align them and then just move them back into the center just so when they rotate they sent they rotate around the bottom corner or the bottom center sorry there you go it's a bit better what I probably would want is the anchor point to be dead center so I could bring these all up into the center if you have snapping ticks at the top, it is as easy as hitting Y on your keyboard and then clicking and waiting for that to jump to the center when you move it. There you go. And now when I change the controls, they should rotate a bit better. They should stay more in position. There we go. Okay, so I have created lots of keyframes by mistake at the end. So what you're going to notice straight away when we watch these animate is that there are decimal places. And this is very easy to fix. So let's start by fixing the first one, number or letter A. Let's go back to our text, our source text expression. And, and at the very start of this, let's go N equals, back to the end, semicolon, new line and what we're going to do is a math dot round open bracket and then n which is our source text that we're after and if i click off now there we go all this does is it rounds it up to a whole number so what we can do let's just copy this second line go to our b press u twice to open up our expression go to the start n equals don't forget to put a semicolon on the end, new line, and let's just paste that math.round open bracket n. What you could have done was do this first and then you can copy the whole thing, just making sure you change the number of the layer. But I'm just going to quickly just add the n equals, semicolon on the end, paste, back to our d, n equals, semicolon, paste, and one last one, n equals, 
semicolon paste. I'll click off now and pay this through, you will see that they are all whole numbers, stay in whole numbers and with no decimal places. If you want to be really tidy, you can do the same to this uh, reference number that we have. Instead, we just want to go n equals to our a plus b line, new line, math dot round, open bracket, n. That should fix that as well. There we go. Okay, and that's that sorted. So you will see at the start that they're not all lined up correctly. I would normally spend a bit more time just um, making sure they're positioned exactly in the center, but that works nicely for this tutorial. What I also did in the um, example was just have them fade up at the start. So on the opacity, have them start at zero. Let's do a quick easy these, just so they're not there at the start. And there we go. Let's just even bring that out a bit, so they don't turn on till a bit later. And there we go. Okay, so I understand that those expressions can look quite confusing. I will include them in the description. Hopefully by watching me go through them, you have a bit more of an understanding of how they work. So if you needed to change them to create any bespoke expressions or any sort of other infographics that you're after, hopefully by going through them, you might be able to manipulate them into what you want them to do. But if not, copy them exactly as you saw me do them or copy and paste them from the description and it should all work. But let me know in the comments if you have any questions or issues and I'll be happy to help. And until then, I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.